In class, we learn about hazards and dangers that exist in our school environment. We drew a seasonal calendar of when hazards occur and we made a community map showing our strengths and capacities and showing our hazards. You can see this information in our school disaster management plan and our school evacuation plan. We have identified quite a few steps that we need to take to reduce our risks and we've integrated into our school improvement plan. Our friend Iggy is going to show us about them. Yes, thank you. Today we will learn six standard operating procedures that cover almost any situation. These are things that we plan and practice so we can do them easily if we need to. There's building evacuation, safe assembly, evacuation to a safe area, shelter in place, lockdown and safe family reunification. We will practice these procedures as well as some specific behaviours for fire, earthquake, tsunami, storms, cyclones and floods. Let's go over the basics of each procedure. Adults will be in charge of the decision making but it should make sense to you too. The first three procedures are linked together. Building evacuation is designed to get us safely out of a building that may be unsafe. The second is safe assembly. That's where we gather and wait in a safe place. The third is evacuation to a safe haven, in case the nearest gathering place is not safe. There are two other options. One is called shelter in place. This means staying indoors because the situation outside is more dangerous than inside. And the other is lockdown, which means that we lock ourselves inside to keep the danger outside. If the danger goes away, then we may just return to class and complete our day normally. If there is a widespread disaster and emergency, then the most important thing to know is that you will stay with your teachers and be cared for until we complete the final procedure, safe family reunification. Let's get ready to put these into practice right now. Let's get prepared. No matter what the emergency, let's think about what supplies we will need. If we have to leave the classroom, what should we take with us and what should we leave behind? <laughs> Sarfina? We should leave everything behind in an emergency and exit straight away. Well, in general, that's true. However, there are few things that we should have ready in our classroom if we have to stay and ready to take with us if we have to leave. We call this our go bag. Wherever we are, we'll need some emergency supplies. Water and ready to eat, non-salty snack food, a first aid kit, personal hygiene items like soap, a flashlight and batteries or candles and matches to give us light. A book with class list and emergency contact information. A whistle to attract attention. And some small items to keep us busy while we wait patiently. Okay, now we're ready. Where do we go? The first basic skill we need to know is how to safely evacuate a building. We will use this in case of fire, and if we're indoors and there's an earthquake, we'll do this after the shaking stops. we we'll learn how to go out and where to go to be safe. All schools should have an emergency evacuation route on the door or wall of each classroom. You will be guided by your teacher or prefect in the case of an emergency. But everyone should be aware of the designated safe exit routes and safe assembly area. 